time, everyone, just so everybody knows. It's been a yeah. long time. It's been sad boy for Frost Boy. <sighs> All right. So, I think we'll open back up on Bertram. You have just entered through the uh, the gate of the town, swinging off your uh, mount, just dragging the scarf away from your face as you enter the sort of like warm space of the town. Very happy. Everybody's happy. I'm here. Is there a festival happening? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Is there a festival? <laughs> I am alive. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, you, swing, you swing off your mount and you see uh, the two, uh, you start hearing the sort of thudding of footsteps and tell your head to see the two boys sort of like running down these wooden stairs uh, at the side of the wall. Yeah, and I'll just like dismount. Yeah, I've dismounted Huck and I've just got the reins. <sighs> Hello. You. Good to see you. Figure out what was it? There. I have no fucking idea. Whatever it was. Killed your beast. And I like, I look at Jerem, and as I say that, in one swift motion, I grab the knife once again, and I literally just cut the hairs <laughs> off of my eyebrow just instantly, and it's completely gone. So one of my eyebrows is now missing. Nice. <laughs> it doesn't make you look as weird as I thought it would. <sighs> Yes, sir. So, what now? Well, if I was you, I would leave this shit stain of a town. Forget about it. Me, however, I'm duty bound here. I'm going to ride off, gather more wardens, come back. Whatever it is. I need manpower. In this town, if it decides to come over here, it doesn't have a shit chance. Right. Your hawk is trying to, like, communicate with feelings uh, and, and, like, sort of vague uh, concepts that it understands, like, what it was seeing. Mm. So it was like, it was like, fear, run, uh, like, uh, kill, ground... Uh, black thing like mm. describing food not food hunter like just just sort of these like flashing of ideas and images in the way that the best way the hawk can describe to you okay <laughs> understand sure I couldn't have killed that thing whatever killed it it's obviously stronger but I, I dropped remember. ahead of a giant at my feet. <laughs> well. Oh. I'll just like hold up the hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just got like a fistful in your leather like yeah. glove. That's bad. Right. We'll probably stay in town. I don't think we'll leave, but we'll leave that. <laughs> to you <laughs> and what happens if it decides to come take a look into the town while I'm gone if you think my brother and I aren't going to try and keep whatever that is from ruining what is left of our mother well you're more see now than I th <laughs> yeah I just kind of like crack a smile and just <laughs> then you can die with her I have to make preparations to be off. Well, Don't do anything stupid. And boy, shield. Uh, oh, yeah, remembering I'll take off the buckler and, like, you know, frisbee it back to you. Mm. Yeah, and I just catch it and... Good lad. And uh, I'm gonna go start making preparations, uh, etc. Like I need to meet with the, the town guard and anybody else of sort of import to let them know what I'm doing and what's going on. 
Yeah, you're going to go meet with the uh, guard captain and then the town master to basically tell them that you're going to be gone for a while, going to go recruit more people to research this thing. Uh, yeah. The town master will tell you that he's got... Uh, he'll, he'll basically recall two dwarves that he'd sent to go look into it. Um, nice. But yeah. Cool. So yeah, you'll, you'll just ride off. Unless the other two want to uh, try and stop him as he rides away. No. I will not. Okay. Just gonna follow yeah. him. My gaze. And Bertram rides off, uh, sort of down the road into the town, leaving the two of you standing by the gate, uh, fearful somewhat, and sort yeah, of yeah, a lot somewhat. less lazy and controlled. Yeah. Hmm. Why did he Rush. do that? <sighs> Which part? Be so stupid. I can't explain it. In his own way, he's trying to keep us safe. He can't keep us safe. Yeah, uh, Jerem just kind of cocks an eye at you. First time I've heard you say that about him. Hmm. He's gotten older. Older. Doesn't care as much about his own safety as he once did. Gotten weak. I don't like it. Time isn't favorable to any of us. No. He's still strong. That's just... He's lost his edge. <clears throat> I don't well, like it. If you don't like it, what do you want to do? <sighs> what we came here to do. Come on. Sure. Where to? I don't fucking know. Right, neither do I. Again, the only thing we know is it's close. Maybe talk to a few people. Um, the one person who the alchemist mentioned the other day was the wild man, um, mm, who was right. supposed who supposedly comes into town towards the end of the week. That's right. He was um, the main lead. Yeah. Okay. He was the person who she'd been paying to go and like check on the uh, to go and check on the place. And when he arrived, he found that the crystal was missing. Okay, that's fine. Very not the crystal, the thing, the stone. Mm. He's somewhere outside of town. Maybe we can see if someone will guide us there. For the shop, we could ask her. She knew about him. Maybe she knows who is willing to go out there. Something tells me she won't be too amicable herself, but... <sighs> Fine. I'm not talking to her this time, though. <clears throat> right. Maybe your, uh... friends might know someone. We don't need to talk to criminals to find a guide. In fact, I'd rather not. They'll charge more. <laughs> well then, to the alchemist. Yeah, and Jaren just starts walking. Mm -hmm. Follow behind Jaren, just like feeling the lightness of my coin purse now and just kind of shaking my head. Yeah. And you guys head over to this sort of strange solvent and slurry uh, building with the sort of very specific chimney and you open the door again hit with like the sort of warm air that stings slightly as you breathe it in um and again nobody is directly behind the counter um but you do hear the sounds of some movement uh from behind the curtain uh Jiren just walks to uh get to the counter assuming someone will come out yep you wait a while maybe a minute or so passes Mm -hmm. uh, and you you begin to hear uh, this sort of sound of clicking steps against stone floor, and 
the uh, let me find uh, and Marilia comes towards mm. the front of the store again. <sighs> You're back. What can I help you with this time? Need any more help or incense? No, at least not now. I wanted to ask you, uh, Mikhail. You said he was living outside of town, correct? He lives wherever his aunt takes him, but he returns to the town to purchase some ingredients every now and then. He has a campsite that he uses a few times in the woods to the north of here. Do you know anyone who could take us there? Uh, there are a few if you would pay them. There is Biart the Goliath. He is known to be a guide for the pair as long as he's able to be back by the evening. Um, there are a few farm boys who live in the town. Ed Strong would be able to show you around some of the immediate sort of areas. I could pass you on to Biart and give him a rough description of the place you're going. I'd appreciate it. All right. Then I will come with you. Sure. Yeah, she like lifts uh, the hatch off like one side and like flips it over uh, and starts walking. Sort of hands in her pockets. You know, she has various like um, satchels and bags. They're sort of like strapped up a uh, sort of band banded belt that goes from shoulder to waist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Jaren will just follow behind her. Yeah. And uh, she opens the door, and as soon as she does, uh, you two meet a very familiar face. Uh, the second the door opens, it reveals uh, on the other side, it reveals Bertram standing there. Huck a little way back. Hmm. Come. I need to talk to you. I'm assuming this is for you. Yes. So soon. Just I will, I'll wait here. Seems like it's... She like looks you sort of up and down for a moment, Bertram. More personal business. Right. Yeah, and Jaren just starts walking over to Bertram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ruff is going to like wait by, to the side of uh, one side of the door. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Thought you were headed off going to see Gade. I am. I want you to take this. I hand you a little pouch. Yeah, I reach out and I take it and then open it. It's heavy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's got. You notice there are uh, a series of glimmering gold pieces um, and a few dazzling white pieces that you would recognize as platinum in the pouch. I don't understand. I want you to take this. And I want to get you and I want you to get you and your brother out of here. You have the luxury of your mother not being buried here. Take her ashes. Go somewhere else. If that isn't worth it. I just kind of look over at Ref. Yeah, I, I'm very sort of squintily looking at Bertram. I just look at you two and I'm going to be gone for a while. And I don't know exactly how long that is. While me or another warden aren't present, this town doesn't have a chance. If anything things to come down and do harm to this place, you're both stupid. And you'll try and help. I wasn't here when your mother... I was off drinking myself to death in a different town while your mother sat here and starved. And I'm not in good conscience going to ride off again and have you die. Now, boys, I need you to take the gold and fucking leave. I'm gonna have no part in you getting yourselves killed.
Don't be fucking stupid. And uh, I'm going to turn around and walk <laughs> away and get on yeah. to Huck. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, you turn around, um, place one hand on mm. Huck, and then I want to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As as he's as you're about to get on, I'm like, what happened to you? You used to be larger than life. You could take on a a wolf as though it were not but a kitten, and now. No wonder I didn't want to remember. You, you don't care about this place. I don't care about this place, and I should. But, but it's your duty. As much as I don't care about duty. What's, what's gotten into you? I just turn around and, and look at you as I get up onto the horse. And yeah, just... I sound very childlike right now, by the way, just in general. You are a stupid little boy. Mind your brother. And I just look at Jerem. Do the right thing. Seeing as how you're the only one in this lot party that can think. Let's go. And I just pat her and... I'm gonna tear off towards the uh, yeah. to the gate. Yeah, yeah as you like yeah as you're leaving, uh, you might hear just Jaren call out, and we better see you back. You see me turn into this little silhouette atop a uh, atop Huck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Bertram disappears. Uh, I couldn't help but. Of the uh, your loud conversation. You should shut your mouth. Me and my brother need to talk. <sighs> I'm just staring off I'll in the go direction he left. See Biat on my own. Oh, you geez. take your time. She like pulls a like sort of uh, warm wrapped fur cloak around her head mm -hmm. and starts sort of like head bowed, almost like trying to keep slightly hidden. Um, sort of heads off down the road. Where should we meet? Ah, uh, Solveig's place. Sure. Yeah, she nods and just continues down. Yeah, and I turn towards uh, Ref and just walk a bit closer and uh, slip into Orcish and just... What do you want to say? Did you repeat what you just said? What do you want to say? What do I want to say? That... That coward... Just... Just left. What do you have to say? I think you'd be the one... More than anyone... Who would have something to say to that. I've made my mistakes. And I'm trying to make up for them, but he... <sighs> Tell me you're not thinking of leaving. Of course I'm thinking of leaving. I'm not going to leave this place. Not yet. And yes, several things I would say to him. But you saw him. Nothing we said was going to get through to him. And I don't know why. I don't know how he's changed. He's not the same man that he was when we last knew him. But how the hell am I supposed to speak that into him? It's his decision who he wants to be. I don't care. Fuck him. Fuck them all. Let's get this shit done with. Start trudging away no. through the snow. Yeah. Just kind of walks, walk up behind you. Just put a hand on your shoulder. <sighs> if there ever comes a point where you do want to leave, tell me. 
Don't keep that hidden. I'm not gonna lose you again. I'm gonna actually turn to face you and my demeanor has completely changed from about 10 seconds ago when I was okay. like, you notice really angry. That he, he still has the like pouch of coins in his hands and you're feeling like, the weight of the coins in your hands, Jaren. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Ref doesn't even probably doesn't even notice it's there. Mm -hmm. um, not through ignorance, just because he's very emotional right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I You don't owe me anything, brother. I'll give you everything I can. And more. If it means we're still family. It's all that matters in this world. Yeah, you just see Jaren look confused for like a split second. Sorry, I don't quite understand. Of course, we're still family. Nothing's going to change that. Good. Just turn around, continue on. Right. Yeah. And I'll put the uh, pouch of coin just at my side. I'll look at it later, but I'm just walking back to Solvix. Yeah. And you guys head over to Solvix. You guys can get some drinks or something if you want, but a little time will pass. And eventually, um, Marilla will arrive at Solvegs uh, through the door, like look around, and then like nod somebody, uh, somebody else in with her. And you see a man duck underneath the doorway. Uh, this man uh, enters the bar as well. And this is a man who you guys might actually recognize uh, as being somebody who was around since the last time. Uh, that you guys were in town. He's one of the few people who survived the sort of starvation slash... Um, um, and he's just sort of been like a handyman. He's been around town for a while. Was... Uh, one of his eyes is completely blind as he like heads in. Mm. He like looks around and then Marilla like points to you two and they start heading over to the table that you guys are at. Ruben. Yes. Was Bjart ever into some shady shit? Uh, not really. Not really? Okay. Yeah, I know. I know he looks kind of like a cottony geezer, but <laughs> that's just—it's just interesting because if if he were, then me and him probably would have had a pretty big rivalry, just because mm -hmm. like he seems like the kind of guy who would rely a lot on physical strength, and I'm the kind of guy who doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Anyway, that's... yeah. I don't think you had much interaction. Okay. Many interactions with him either way. You just sort of like recognize him as a face. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> He's someone. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they head over to your table. Mm -hmm. <sighs> May I introduce you to Biat Asgir? Uh, these boys are Lef and Jaren Melly's boys. Biat, I remember you somewhat when we lived here. Good, good to meet you. It's nice to finally be meeting you boys as well. Like, takes a seat in this chair, sort of like creaks under his weight. Hmm. I hear that you boys will be needing somebody to show you around the woods in the north. Looking for a campsite. And it's just right, like right. very intense, like sort of stare while he talks at you. Right. Uh, uh Macau's place. I can show you there. I'll have to be back by the eve. Asmund eats his food. Sure. Uh, how long to get out, I think? Well, it's about mid-sun now. We have a few hours. Maybe an hour's journey there and back. If All you right. boys are ready for a trek into the snow, we should leave soon. Just kind of look at Ref, shrug, and... Just start nodding. All right. Yeah. All right, then. Let's be off. Yeah, Marilia, like, leans down and whispers something to Biart. But I'll need payment for the trip. Sure. How much? Gold. 
Yeah, um, I would have uh, counted uh, while we were waiting what uh, Bertrand had given given us. Yeah, he gave you fifty gold and five platinum pieces, so a hundred gold in total. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, then I will take out ten gold and I will hand it to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll take it and hand two gold pieces to Marilia. She nods, sort of smiling. It is good uh, doing business with you boys. More than we've had here in a while. So, like, sure. takes a slight bow and heads out. Should we get going? Yes. We're up now. Then we'll leave. Bialik like, stands up again, like lowering his head for the high, for the low ceiling, um, like uh, avoiding the sort of beams that suspend it. Yeah. As you guys head out of the tavern, big man Bjorn. And yeah. unless anyone would like to do anything, I think that's where we're going to end for today. All right. Uh, everybody, take inspiration. <laughs>